So uh, we will welcome everybody and thank you for joining our April learning series. Today, we're going to do a micro 800 update and uh, we'll have a little bit of a, a special treat because we'll have a, a live demo, which is always exciting uh, to, uh, to witness. So let me get uh, click in the screen here. All right. So um, first, I'll introduce myself, Wayne Welk, automation specialist out of New Orleans with the Reynolds Company. And joining me today will be Roger McClary, an automation specialist out of Waco, right, uh, Roger? Make sure I... Uh, yeah, let's, let's call Waco. It, Waco? Not... All right. Yeah, most of Texas, actually. Most of Texas. Okay. <laughs> North Texas. Um, <laughs> I don't know my Texas geography, unfortunately. Um, so as we usually do, uh, we, we, we like to show what's coming up and, and also kind of highlight what we've done this year in case you've missed some sessions or haven't. Uh, this might be your first session you're joining with us here. So, um, so we kind of, we do two, two forms of online series. Uh, one is the learning series, which we call, which is happening today. Uh, our topic today, of course, is the micro 800 update and our learning series are usually, um, an hour long session or so, and they're usually focused on Rockwell automation products and solutions. So coming up for the rest of the second quarter, uh, after today in May, we have a uh, networking topologies, resiliency, and best practices topic, which is uh, always a a good topic, always of interest. And in June, we're going to highlight uh, some Rockwell automation pr uh, product selection and configuration tools. So that's mainly integrated architecture builder, proposal works, and a few other secret uh, tools that are out there that that you may or may not know about. So we find a lot of times that um, you know we we like to throw IAB and proposal works around out there, but a lot of people still don't really um, may not have that much experience with it, may not realize all the features and capabilities that are inside those tools. So we'll, we'll highlight that in June. Then our tech talks are, are also online sessions, uh, usually shorter, about half hour. And this year we, we've decided to focus our tech talks on the technology partners. And these are all the other partners, um, you know, that work with Rockwell, uh, formerly known as the Encompass Partners. Now they're called technology partners. So this month in a few weeks, we'll, we'll look at Metler Toledo um, and how their, their scales integrate into the Logix platforms. Uh, then in May, we'll look at Panduit and Cable Cleats for short circuit protection. And June, we'll have Southwire talking about VFD cables. So, um, so a few, some interesting and different topics coming up in, in those series as well. And everything, of course, is uh, accessible on reynoldsonline.com. That's where you can go see the, the latest calendar and register. And the ones in gray are the previous topics. So those are all been posted to our uh, YouTube channel. So you're more than welcome to go back and watch any of those if you missed them. Now, the other thing we've been highlighting, even though it's, you know, November seems far away still, uh, we, we have been kind of just, um, discussing and, and highlighting uh, Automation Fair. This year it is in November. Uh, well, it's always in November, but this year it's in Boston. Um, but the uh, other big difference is that the uh, Automation Fair will be a, a, a longer, um, it'll be a longer, like a full week. Uh, what's been happening uh, this year is that the the Rock Live event that used to be known as Tech Ed as well, used to be in June. Now this year they're gonna kind of incorporate that Rock Live event uh, in the same week as Automation Fair. So that kind of extends the week a bit. And uh, it'll be um, all the technical sessions that Rock Live had, as well as the exhibit floor um, that you're familiar with from Automation Fair. So again, I know it's April, it's a long ways away, but as we get closer and closer, we'll learn more and more about it and uh, continue to share that information as, uh, as it comes out. So as I mentioned before, uh, We'll have uh, myself and Roger McClary will uh, we'll do our uh, presentation and demo today. I'll do the uh, presentation and Roger gets the honor of uh, doing the live demo. So we thought, you know, our, we thought first thing would be to kind of just give an, a general overview of the Micro 800 family. That's why we kind of called it the Micro 800 update. There has been some new developments, which is, you know, the real reason why we're kind of bringing uh, this topic today. But just first, the uh, a general overview for anyone who's not familiar or maybe haven't uh, looked that closely at the Micro 800 family. So the Micro 800 family is is kind of again the the general term for the for the full family. There are five different models in the family, uh, scaling all the way down 
from the A10, which is like a smart relay up to the micro 870. So the real big, uh, you know, the first kind of big news here is that the the guy in the middle, the micro 830, is going to become a, a discontinued product fairly soon, I think sometime in the summertime frame. So the, the micro 830 was always a little bit of a, you know, a strange sibling in that uh, it didn't have an ethernet port on it. Uh, it just has a serial port and USB port. So um, it kind of makes a little bit of sense that Rockwell would decide to discontinue that, considering that the, uh, the 820, 850, and 870, you know, all support uh, ethernet as well as serial and US, uh, well, USB on the 850s and 870s. So kind of makes sense. But if you, if you are an 830 customer, then uh, most likely you would uh, potentially move up to the 850 and or 870, uh, depending on the circumstances. Um, the the kind of the color bars above kind of also help highlight some of the features in each one. Um, so the 820, 850, 870 all support Ethernet. The uh, 850 and 870 uh, support expansion I.O. modules in addition to the plugins. And we'll, we'll highlight each one of these in a little bit more detail. Um, the 850 and 870 can also do DF1, and then the 870, as part of another new uh, update here, can also uh, handle DNP3 uh, support now. So, uh, and the other one in purple is uh, the other kind of really new feature is the 850 and 870 can handle the class one implicit messaging uh, with with the latest version of firmware and the the new model. So. We'll talk a little bit more about each model here um, just to show them off. So the A10 is our smallest um, controller in the family. It's a 12-point um, PLC. Uh, it's kind of dubbed a smart relay, but it is a PLC. It uses the CCW software to uh, to develop. Um, it runs a ladder logic. Uh, so it's it's got an embedded power supply, um, depending on how you buy it, uh, 12, 24, or 120 volt, or 240 volt AC uh, for power supply. There is an optional LCD display, so you could pop the little LCD display on there and and um, and show some kind of data point on that little display. It's pretty small, but you can do that. Um, there are uh, eight inputs. And again, depending on how you purchase it, it uh, you could get DC or AC inputs. Four outputs, um, relay, or you can get the 24-volt uh, DC transistor uh, output type. And you do have uh, four analog um, inputs. So when you do that, though, it, it takes away uh, four of the discrete inputs. Uh, but you do you could actually bring in an analog signal into this unit as well, zero to ten volt um, for the uh, for that analog input. And the other kind of key thing is to remember that there's this little USB adapter that's required. So the only way that we can really get connected in this thing is with this USB adapter, and that's how you'll interface your laptop into it to program it. And it's DIN rail or panel mount. The H20 is the next guy up in the in the family. Um, this is a really really unique and powerful little microcontroller. It's 20, 20 points embedded. So the green terminals on the top and bottom are the embedded I/O points. Um, the inputs are on the top row. The outputs are on the bottom row. Um, so you have you know it's kind of a fixed amount of embedded I/O, and then we have two plug-in modules that we can expand the uh, the I/O as needed. Um, it does have Ethernet on this one, so it's hiding kind of underneath uh, the, the the main CPU uh, where all the, the the logo Alan Brawley logo is. There's an Ethernet port hiding underneath there. Um, the the green this uh, this green terminal here is actually a serial port, so it supports 232 and 45, and it can handle uh, Modbus RTU uh, as well as ASCII. So uh, so it's kind of a Pretty, pretty powerful in that you can, you know, talk to some legacy Modbus RTU equipment without having to add anything additional to the micro H20. Uh, it's got a built-in real-time clock. Uh, it does have four analog inputs and one analog output. So again, uh, those analog inputs are shared with the discrete. So that would take away some of your discrete inputs. 
um, and then the one analog output, all, both again, the embedded, the, bed, the embedded analogs are zero to 10 volt. If you need four to 20 milliamp, then you'll have to add a plug-in module. Um, up to four uh, thermistor inputs as well. Uh, two plugins for expansion. Um, there is a built-in micro SD card slot. So, so you, you can uh, put a micro SD card in, into the CP, into the micro A20 and, and do some data logging or uh, for backup, uh, which is pretty unique. Uh, it does support pulse width modulation as well. And the A20 does uh, support a an optional LCD display. Uh, the LCD display would use the serial port there. So um, that would basically, if you're going to do uh, Modbus RTU, you would not be able to use the LCD here. But you, you could connect this LCD um, display to the micro H20 and just have some uh, you know four line text um, with with some various color backlights. So kind of a, an interesting concept, as well as a USB uh, port there on the front to interface back to the uh, controller. So moving up next is the micro eight fifty. Uh, this one is is the um, you know the first model here in the family that will support the uh, the expansion I/O. So all the all these cards here to the uh, to the right. Our expansion I/O off this main base. So just like the micro A20, you know, in the A10, we have a certain amount of embedded I/O, you know, inputs and outputs on these green terminals, and then there's uh, plug-in modules that we can also add. But then we can also continue to grow with expansion I/O. So a 24 volt DC is is the standard input for for the uh, power, but there are there is an optional. AC power supply module that will kind of slide right there to the to the left, which would bring 120 volt in and and put a 24 volt out that you can just wire over into the uh, into the micro 850. Uh, the 850 supports Ethernet. It does have uh, RS-232-45 and that eight pin circular DIN connection uh, or, or connector, and then also has a USB support of USB for for programming uh, downloading from the P from your laptop. Uh, there is a run program switch hiding down there in the bottom too. So a little toggle switch that will allow you to flip between run and program mode. Uh, should be noted that those, you know, those uh, communication ports and that run switch, there is a little plastic cover that comes so that so it does you can protect all that from being tampered with. Um, High speed inputs and outputs. Uh, they, it does support up to three axes of motion, and uh, various options on if you want sync or source and relay output. So there are several combinations of uh, part numbers for for each model in the Macro 800 family. So just you know make sure you're choosing the right type of inputs and outputs you want in in your you know for the embedded inputs. Uh, those green terminals are removable, so for ease of uh, wiring, or if you need to replace the uh, replace the unit, you can take the removal term block off, put a new base unit in, and put the terminal block back on. Uh, up up to five plug-in slots and uh, up to four expansion I/O modules in the 850, and that's for brings up to a total of a potential of 192 I/O points in the 850 family. So so pretty decent for a microcontroller. Um, for your total I/O count, uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, an ECR bus terminator. So when you're using the uh, expansion I/O, that uh, there'll be a plastic uh, end cap that basically will go on that far right, and it does come uh, with the CPU, I believe, and then rail or panel mount. So here's what's really new. Um, so. Recently, uh, Rockwell released what we call the E, the kind of the E family here. So it's the 2080-L50E. The L50, that, that's just the CPU, and the 50 means it's the 850. And the E is the uh, enhanced uh, protocol uh, communications. So previously, it was just a 2080-LC50. Now it's a 2080 l I'm, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, LC50, now it's a 2080L50E. So all of the previous catalogs, um, the LC50 versions, 
they are all going to start to uh, become discontinued here pretty soon. So the only option going forward will be the the L50E, you know, at some point here in the in the, in the near future. So what the uh, what the enhanced protocol communication option brings you is it gives you expanded DF1 communicate. No, so this is in the 850 now. So in the 850, you get expanded DF1 communication support. So that's going to bring in uh, DF1 full duplex master, uh, half duplex slave, DF1 radio modem support, um, and uh, uh, so the the SIP serial is still supported. That that didn't change. And then the uh, the class one implicit messaging capability. So again, at versions 21 of the firmware, which is the latest version, uh, we can do up to eight nodes and support class one implicit messaging. And that's what Roger's gonna uh, show us here in just a, just a little bit. Then that basically means that we'll be able to, and there'll be some, there's some predefined tags that will support, um, or there are predefined tags in this version 21 firmware that supports the uh, PowerFlex 520 series and the Kinetics 5100 drives. So uh, we'll, we'll show that here in a bit as well. And lastly, the Micro 870. So uh, it's this is the top of the top of the family. Uh, it's going to be the the highest memory, the most I/O supported, um, kind of the the best performing CPU out of the out of all those um, previous models. Uh, so the the Micro 870 kind of comes in a um, the, you know the main CPU is is here on the far left. And there are three plugins options, whereas the 850 we had up to five plugins we could we could have. Uh, the 870 is three plugins, but we can do more expansion I/O uh, in the 870 family. You know, it's got twice the the program and data memory capacity of the 850, um, so it's it's you know larger amount of memory. Uh, PID auto tune. It can do four high speed counters, um, uh, two pulse train outputs. Uh, PLC open motion instructions. So uh, the the same amount of, uh, e you know, the same communication options we had in the 850 are here. We got the uh, Ethernet serial USB. Um, the difference is, is that the 870 will have a DMP3 uh, capability. Uh, Plug-in modules. So again, we can expand beyond the, um, beyond the embedded IO that comes with the unit. With the plugin modules as well as we can go up to eight expansion IO modules. So that's a total of up to 304 local IO points. So 850 is about 190 something. Here we can get up to uh, 300 uh, IO points. There is a uh, expansion power supply module. So the 870, you know, as, as we kind of extend these uh, expansion IO cards out, uh, you might need to uh, to get a an additional uh, power supply in there to, to boost up. Uh, so there is a uh, kind of expansion IO module. Oh, I'm sorry, an expansion power supply module that, that would kind of go into this into this expansion IO um, area. And uh, there's also a uh, um, well, there, there's a plug-in. There's a memory backup uh, card, and we'll show that the plugins too. It's just highlighted here on this this one too. But the uh, the 870 and as well as the 850, you can use this this uh, backup plug-in module. So, like the 820 had a micro SD card slot available to it built in. Here, you can um, you can use a a, a memory backup card to uh, to expand your memory. So uh, the 870E. So again, this is kind of the same story here. The uh, the the previous models of the of the 870 so that's the 2080 lc 70 models they will um they will become discontinued here in the, in the not too uh you know far future uh the replacements will be the l70e so they are direct replacements um just that they will have the enhanced uh communication capabilities so same story as the 850 you know the df1 protocol support um the difference is the dmp3 support so and it's also important to note that uh, if you need DMP3, you will have to make sure you you have the the N model. So um, there's a these two down at the bottom that didn't have a previous uh, catalog version next to it. There's an N at the end of the catalog number that will indicate that it's DMP3. So it you will have to make sure you purchase that capability um, if you need it. 
So just to, um, as far as the expansion IO goes, you know, this is the, the, the IO that would stack on to the, to the end of the, uh, 850 and 870. There are, uh, lots of various, uh, options here, discrete analog, thermal couple, RTD, um, cards out there. So you get a much higher density than what you can do in the plugin modules with these expansion modules. Uh, plugin modules, there's a, a large assortment of plugins. So the eight, the 820, 850, 870, they all take, you know, the plugin modules. So there are analog versions, analog IO, two and four channels. Um, again, these are four to 20 milliamps. So you can, you know, get a, get a four to 20 milliamp signal there. Uh, digital IO to increase some uh, digital uh, IO footprint. There's a uh, resistance, uh, RTD, thermal couple. There's even a trim pot uh, car, which is kind of interesting. It's got little six little um, trim pots built right on in. So you can just use a screwdriver and, and make some adjustments without having to uh, take out your laptop. There's a serial uh, port. So if you need to add an additional serial port, you can use the plugin for that. Uh, that would also support SIP, Modbus, RTU, ASCII. Uh, there is a, a real-time clock, uh, a backup memory with a real-time clock plug-in module. That's mainly for the 850 and 870. Here's a device net scanner, high-speed counter. So, you know, there's a lot of flexibility and functionality to the Micro 800 family. So you can, you know, you can definitely expand it. And there's there's some specialty cards and plugins we can add here, and there's even a few um, from the partner network. So Spectrum Controls has been you know, a longtime partner of Rockwell's and makes a lot of um, you know specialty I/O cards. They also make some for the uh, Micro 800 family as well. And uh, last one here on the uh, on the I/O is just showing you this is the optional power supply. So again the the, the the base micro 800s all power up on 24 volt DC. So if you need to or want to, you can put a uh, you know a matching power supply just kind of slides right on to the uh, the far left hand side of the CPU, and you can bring one 20 volt AC in and 24 volt DC out. So if, you, if that's all you have control power is one 20 volt AC um, or 240 volt AC as well, then you can uh, use this to uh, power your micro 800. All right, so a bit more on what's new here in the uh, in the e in the e catalog numbers. So um, again, the micro the 850 and the 870 will be the ones that have this enhanced capability. You do need to be at version 21 firmware. Um, it will have the predefined tags for the PowerFlex 520 series and the Kinetics 5100 drives. Uh, it can do generic tags for all other Ethernet IP devices. So Roger's going to show. Here in a bit that we can actually connect to um, to a point IO drop as well, uh, up to eight devices support it, and there are pre-developed user-defined function blocks uh, instructions for the PowerFlex 520 and Kinetics 5100 drives as well. Um, so what what hap what really happens here, and again we'll demonstrate this, but just to have a screenshot of it in case um, you know. In these new controllers, when you go into CCW software and you're doing your configuration, there'll be an Ethernet um, kind of in the, you know in the tree. There'll be an Ethernet uh, uh, option, and you can expand that, and you can add your modules. So you can actually add uh, the Ethernet modules to our Ethernet tree, essentially in the Micro 800. Here, we'll, uh, just showing that uh, you know as we do that, we can. Um, We'll, you know, we'll have our devices, their names, their types, and their IP addresses kind of all just added in this chart and then um, in the, underneath the tree here. And again, we'll, we'll demonstrate this better than this screenshot will show. Um, so as we do that, uh, as we add these devices, there will be a, a, a tag structure that will get created um, in our, uh, in our um, tags in, in, the, in the controller. So in our, our, our um, uh, global tags, basically. And then uh, just a little uh, screenshot on the user-defined function blocks. So um, so again, these are blocks that are kind of pre-built that will um, that will kind of inter we could use to interface with with the drive and the kinetics um, referencing those tags that got created to uh, to control our our drive. And again, we're going to show that here in just a moment.
Uh, basically, we can do this in ladder logic uh, LD. Here's the uh, what the block looks like. So before, actually, what this, this was showing is that prior to version 21, you know, to, to communicate to a drive, uh, it was class three and uh, use a find function block. And then here now, starting in version 21, you know, we'll have this new class one capability with this enhanced uh, user-defined function block. So last piece here, I want to just, before we turn to the demo, let's take a moment to just talk about CCW software itself or Connected Components Workbench software, just as a um, kind of an update on it, um, a refresher. So first thing is uh, we went, version 21 is the latest version. So we went from version 13, which was in March of 2021, to version 20, which was last year, to um, March, of, you know, March of 2022, and then version 21 late last year. So the the obvious question here is what happened to versions 14 through 19? Um, so so don't uh, try not to let that um, throw you too far uh, off the trail. Uh, just know that you know we went from 13 to 20, and then uh, 21 is the latest version. Now the other thing that always comes up here is that you know. There are two versions of CCW software. There's a standard edition, which is completely free, unlicensed, no, um, no ifs, ands, buts, uh, caveats to it. Uh, but there is a developer edition, which does come at a cost and a relatively low cost at that. Um, but there are a few differences. So standard edition typically can do everything you need to do uh, to support your equipment. Um, developer edition, though, the main differences are is that uh, you can get the spy list, which is a, basically a way of creating a, a pre kind of a pre-developed um, list of tags that you want to uh, monitor in an application. And you can do run mode change. So we got run mode changes that can be done in developer edition that cannot be done in standard edition and these user defined data types um, uh, as well. The other difference is the simulator. Um, the the uh, the built-in simulator will only work as a 10 minute uh, in standard edition, whereas it can run for 24 hours uh, in developer edition, as well as intellectual property protection. So those are the main differences between uh, standard and developer. Easy to acquire if you want the standard edition. It's a free download. Um, there's a basically you can Google Connect Components Workbench uh, standard edition. It'll bring you to right to Rockwell's website, and you can download it. If you do want a developer edition, well, then just reach out to us and we're more than happy to provide a quote for it. And um, uh, and again, it's uh, it's it's now sold through our software subscription portal, Rockwell's uh, software subscription portal. Uh, so we can uh, provide you an option for either perpetual license or a subscription, yearly subscription use for that software if you want. So there are just a few main pieces to CCW. Um, it does more than just program the micro 800, but the uh, you know part of its core function is programming the micro 800, of course. So um, this is the tool that we use for all the micro 800 families. Uh, it supports um, ladder, function block, structured text. So uh, we can do it. Um, there's been a lot of improvements over the last uh, few years to to make it uh, more kind of in line with what our users are used to with the logics platforms, especially those who are coming from the micro logics over into the micro 800 family. So there's um, there's been uh, the ability to uh, to reuse ladder logic between the CCW and the Studio 5000 and RS Logics 500. Uh, there's copy paste capability between the the tools. The different software packages. So you could take a piece of code out of, you know, that you were using in RS Logics 500 and copy and paste it into the uh, CCW. So, you know, the 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 ease of of transitioning from a MicroLogics over to the uh, Micro 800 has been greatly um, uh, increased over the last few years. Um, just to highlight. You know, there is a uh, MicroLogix to Micro 800 converter built into CCW. So you can take your uh, your MicroLogix program and uh, import it right on in to uh, CCW. The other kind of thing that's really um, 
kind of unique is the simulator. It's it's built right in. Um, there's no additional, you know, cost to, to have to use it. So you can uh, basically create a uh, create a project, create some code, and then just fire up the uh, the Micro 800 simulator and uh, and connect to it and test out your logic. And uh, what you can do there is you can um, see the little orange. This is the simulator. It's a little virtual looking uh, micro 850, but I can click on all these inputs here and that will basically toggle the input on and off. And then I can actually watch my outputs light up down here as well. So I can control the simulation uh, by clicking on the inputs and toggling them. There are also some additional in, uh, interfaces. Uh, there's a virtual IO wiring and there's also an IO interface. Um, so, so there are a few other ways you can kind of interface with your, with your simulator. They're a little bit more advanced than just clicking on the uh, the the uh, the picture there. Uh, the other main piece of CCW is the is configuring other Rockwell products. So, in addition to the Micro 800, um, it, it's it's also the tool we use to configure the PowerFlex 520 series drive, 5100 SMC soft starts, the GuardMaster uh, 440C. Uh, the guard master uh, speed monitoring safety relays, the guard shield light curtain, as well as the E200 uh, electronic overload. So, you know, CCW is is a you know pretty important tool um, for maintaining and configuring um, a lot of other Rockwell products. Uh, last piece uh, on CCW is is the visualization piece. So there is a panel view 800 family that is really designed to you know made up nicely with the micro 800 family and to develop those panel view 800 screens you're going to use ccw as well and with that i'm going to uh give it over to roger to demonstrate for a little bit we'll come back and after roger demonstrates i'll, I'll show you some additional resources that are out there to help you with the micro 800 so i'll i'll turn it over to roger okay cool let me minimize this guy here uh yeah, it, 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 what we're going to try to do is, is kind of uh, piggyback on what Wayne was talking about for, and standard edition is I've, I've experienced if you've got the standard version and you've written your program and say a, a L50 and you need to go to an L70, the change controller is grayed out on the standard, whereas on the developer, it's there. So you can actually very easily you know go from an 850 to 870. Uh, if not, you've you kind of got to do some code rewrite. And so, but uh, anyway, other than that, that's a great presentation, Wayne, and, and a lot of information. I actually uh, kind of learned some new features on the uh, Micro 800 family uh, that I was not aware of. So that was uh, uh, helpful helpful to me. What we want to do now is, is just kind of show you, because uh, my, my, my pet peeve has always been, you know, we can always make it work in a PowerPoint. Animations always work in a PowerPoint and things just seem to work. But uh, just to kind of show you, you know, Statement I've always used ad nauseum. You know, my dad was born in Missouri. You know, Missouri is the show me state. So, okay, you know, show me how it works. And so, um, what I could do is uh, I've got a, a a project started up here, and uh, I'm using the developer edition. And so, uh, if I wanted to say start a, a, a new project, I can call mine. Uh, I always call it delete me. That way, I know if I see delete me in my project folder. Um, It's ready to go. So let me try it this way. Oh, I think Bleep Me is already there. That's the reason. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I've already got it open. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to okay, let's, look, let's do it project one. So I'm opening up a connected components workbench uh, project called project one. And I'm going to go to add a controller and I'm going to select the micro 870 and the 870 E because that is the enhanced version. The one I'm working with today is the 24 QBB. Here's the end versions that uh, Wayne was talking about that have the uh, DMP3 support. And so what's also kind of cool inside of CCW, as I select this processor, it actually tells me that it is an active processor. So it, it gives you the life cycle status of the device within CCW. And I'm running version 21 uh, because I have to do run 21 to get the um, uh, the features that I need. But I could select different firmwares at this point if, if I needed to. 
And so everything, I like everything here. So I'm, I'm going to select it. And then I need to add it to the project. I get that call quite often. So you just because you select it, you do have to add it to the project. Oh, by the way, uh, uh, what I'm doing here today, you're fixing to see some hardware. And I've used CCW and RS Links were the only two packages of software I used to configure everything that we're fixing to do here today. So here's my project. Um, um, I've got, yeah, you know, I don't have any tasks in there and I'm fixing to go online with the processor and you'll see there are no tasks because I want to show you what we're doing. Everything we're doing here is via tag manipulation. Okay. So, and to set up the, um, the, the devices that Wayne was showing in our ethernet tree, I would go down here. I would select my, my, my controller, micro 70 controller, double click on it. It brings up this window, if you will, here. Okay. And this is where I set up my, you know, I uh, I I can look at my memory how much I'm using, you know, I can configure my serial ports, my USB ports and, and the likes. I can do mod bus mapping. This, this, this is your main, you know, screen, if you will. We're interested in Ethernet. And so, of course, uh, the first thing I'd want to do is give my uh, controller an IP address. And I'm literally just making it one as we go here. And then, of course, the subnet mask. And then so now that I've got that configured, now I can hit the plus sign here. And then now I go into modules. Um, this is going to look a whole lot like an add-on profile for the Studio 5000 and Compact Logics. It's not, but it sure looks a lot like it. And so here's where we're going to add uh, our devices. The first device I want to add, of course, I click Add, and I'm going to add a generic device. And that's going to allow me to talk to a some point I.O. Um, as a remote I.O. Now, the question comes up, you know, why do I want to use, you know, point IO as a remote drop to a micro 800 when the point IO configuration is going to cost more? Um, there, there's probably not a good reason. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. What we're trying to do is show you that we can do class one messaging to an Ethernet IP device. So I'm using point IO to prove that. But what if this were a flow switch or a pressure switch or a Coriolis meter or some other Ethernet IP device that I needed data? to bring into my uh, uh, my micro 800. I would use generic messaging, or the, I'm sorry, class one messaging here. And to set this up, I'm just gonna call mine AENTR because that's what I have out there. And under the windows, I, here's why I would select if it was a generic device. If it was a 523 using the, uh, uh, the ethernet adapter, because remember the 523 does not have a built-in ethernet adapter, so I'd have to use the E2P. We have some customers who are using the 525 with the E2P. I happen to be using a 525 with the built-in Ethernet. I'll, I'll select that here in just a second. But the first one I'll set up is I want to set up the AENTR. Okay. I'm going to give it another IP address. And we'll call this one uh, 21 just because. Now, you notice here, I can, uh, this one I can only select the same king. I'll show you on the, the, uh, uh, PowerFlex 5 series drive that I could select compatible module or exact match. Now, here's where the fun comes in. This is where you're going to have to get with the manufacturer or whoever made your device. I happen to have, have a manual for the AENTR, and so I know if I'm doing generic messaging to the AENTR, I have to select as a single integer, and then I have to know these numbers, and this is information that sometimes is somewhat confusing. Um, I, I sometimes refer to it as that Annie Oakley, Annie Oakley magic decoder ring settings because you, you've got to know these numbers. And I'll, I'll, enter them and I'll explain them just a little bit best I can. Okay, so uh, uh, this is from the manual assembly instance. It's like our class instance attribute numbers. This is assembly entrance input 101, output uh, 100. I have to know that based from the AENTR manual. So if you're using a flow switch, a pressure switch, or whatever, that information is going to be made available to you. And my configuration, you'll see these in my tags here in just a little bit. You'll, you'll see an input block of tags, an output block of tags, and a configuration block of tags. Now, the reason I've got an 11 and a 1 here, the 11 is because the first eight words of the input assembly are reserved for overhead for the AENTR. I have two uh, point IO modules, and they they they're going to absorb or consume uh, the next two. 
because I have an output module, then it's going to uh, uh, consume that 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 last left bit, if you will, of the eight bit word. So these numbers actually mean something under the hood. So anyway, I can also go down here and select either a, 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 a if I uncheck unicast, I'm doing a broadcast. I don't uh, recommend that, but anyway, and this is this is interesting here because I can actually select the, re the requested packet interval, the RPI time, interrupt time for how often the controller talks to this device. Unless you have specific needs, I would say leave it at 20 uh, milliseconds and just be done with it. So I like this, what I've got here. So I'm gonna click okay. And now you'll see it, it, it creates it down here. When I go online with the processor, if this were faulted, you would actually see the connection fault here and it would give you that 16 pound hexadecimal number that you could then you know, go to knowledge base and research what the problem is. And over here, you'll see when I go online, it'll say running, idle, or whatever. It actually tells you you are connected and life is good. Oh, yeah, if I need to edit this, I need to change something, I would just double-click on it, and it brings that page right back up, okay? So I've added that. Now I want to add a drive, and I'm going to add a, a PowerFlex 525 drive, and I get real creative with my naming. Conventions, call it my PowerFlex. Now I can't select generic device. So I'm going to select a 525. I'm using the built-in Ethernet, so I'm going to select this. And notice when I select this, all this goes away because this, this um, um, GUI, if you will, is going to create what I need. Okay, so now I do need to give it the IP address. And I have to know it's 29. Now, I can select velocity or position, okay? I'm going to select velocity. And the reason this comes into play is I'm not using them, but Wayne had mentioned some UDF, UDFBs, user-defined function blocks. You can download a user-defined function block that will go with the velocity format of this drive or the position format of this drive. And that, uh, uh, that'll make you, you know, uh, talking to your tags a whole lot easier. Now, this is important. If I select exact match, see I've got a line that's validated, and I have to select exact match, then I'm gonna have to select the proper major and minor revision, okay? Um, for demo purposes, I always select disable king because it just seems to work better. But anyway, I do have to tell it, I am using a uh, this driver right here. I'm not using the half horse, I'm using the one horsepower. I could give it a description if I want to, and there's my requested packet interval. Um, and you can inhibit the module if you need to do work without faulting the processor. So, um, so I click OK, and there it is. So th that's how you would create it. And, that, and you also would be able to download it to your processor and build it. In the interest of time, uh, Wayne and I were laughing. It's kind of like the baking shows of old where they, you, you make the meatloaf. And as soon as you're done making the meatloaf, somebody's already pulled it out of the oven. Well, this is what we have right here. We've already kind of got this thing baked and, and pulled out of the oven. I'll show you that uh, under the uh, 870, here are my, my, my devices. I am online running. I'll show you a camera view of them just in just a little bit. It, it is running, uh, and there's my AENTR running, and there's my PowerFlex 525 drive. Something else you can do, um, if I go up here and double-click my Ethernet and diagnose, it brings up a different screen, which we've not had before. So now I can also go up here and select Ethernet IP Overview, and it gives me my active TCP connections, my maximum connections, unconnected. It lets me know how many packets I've missed. And here are my devices. Here's the uh, AENTR. Here's the drive. This class three is literally my CCW uh, GUI that's running right now. So this thing gives you a lot of information as far as what in the heck is running. And if you're having trouble, this can help uh, maybe on the phone with tech support can help you troubleshoot some stuff. But it's a very important pa page that we haven't had um, access to in the past. Okay, so let me kind of minimize this because I want to show you what we're uh, kind of looking at here. Slide this guy over to the right. I kind of got to arrange my screen just right. Okay, here's a wonderful little camera shot. We've got our, our 870 running right here. Okay, beside it, we have our point IO uh, running right here. And then here's our PowerFlex drive. 
Okay, that's that's actually the hardware that we're running. And just to kind of show you, you know, uh, that, that we are, you know, actually running. Um, if I go over to here and I start clicking these bits, you'll notice the lights actually turning on over here. I mean, that's you know no big deal, but uh, that's just proving we're doing class, you know, the class one messaging, and that could be turning on whatever. Okay, and then of course here are my inputs. Now, you remember I talked about the first eight words are reserved by the ANTR. So that means my first available outputs are right here or inputs are right here. If I, you know, so uh, let me open up both of these. So, uh, so I hate doing stuff live, but anyway. Uh, Ten. A E N T R eight. There we go. There they are. Okay, I opened up the wrong one. Here are those inputs that I'm, uh, I was turning on and off. So that's just showing you those are the inputs. That could be a a word. That could be something from a, a flow meter or or what have you. Now, what is really interesting? Not too much exciting stuff going over on over here because you kind of got to know all this stuff. If I'm actually running my drive, okay. Here here's my my PowerFlex drive. Let me kind of expand this out so you, I can show you what I'm looking at here. Okay, here's the output to my drive. There's my logic command words, okay? These are all bits and bytes, if we will, not, not too exciting, but my slide over here, when you add that device, it adds these comments and descriptions. So I know now that this bit right here is my start bit. If I don't utilize the user-defined function blocks, I have to write to PowerFlex 525 underscore zero dot logic command dot one. If I utilize the UDFB, now all I do is it creates the start bit and it pretty well truncates all this. And now I'm writing to that start bit. And just to show you that we are communicating with the drive, um, I'm going to click the start, which is going to do absolutely nothing. It's running right now, but it's running at zero uh, commanded speed, which is exactly what I've told it to do. And let me get this back up here. There's my logic command, and there's my speed command. Oh, I take it back. I'm sorry. I had the 1,000 in this, so it's running at uh, 10 hertz. My bad. Uh, that's actually a 1,000, which would be 10 hertz. If I wanted to say, you know, make it go, you know, slower, 500 hertz, maybe you can see it a little bit better, you know, 500 and enter. So, and I show that, or say that to show this. I don't have any tasks running. There's nothing in my main tasks. This is all being controlled by the global variables right here. And that's where at the micro 870, the, 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 the controller variables, if you will. So I'm able to do all of that within uh, just manipulating tags. And that's what we're talking about, class one uh, messaging capabilities. So, it, I don't, you know, it, for those of you who've been asking for this, you, you know, if you're like me, you're going, hey, this is fantastic. For some of the other ones, you're going, well, I can do the same thing with the compact logics. Well, yes, you can. And, and I, we, we hope you continue to do it in that, uh, the compact logics. But. If you need a lower cost controller to talk to, you know, any other device on Ethernet IP, um, the Micro 820 or 85870 with the E, the enhanced, is is now uh, considered a major player um, in that realm. So, Wayne, that's pretty well all I wanted to show, uh, and so I'll let I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, uh, that was good, and yeah, I learned a few things there too, Roger. So we are uh, sharing knowledge. Let me uh, go back to my screen. And we'll just wrap this up with a few resources that um, just to um, bring everybody aware of. Uh, first is the, uh, there is, uh, so IAB, that's Integrated Architecture Builder. And we discussed that we were going to do a session on that in June um, coming up. But this is, there's some features now that IAB has been enhanced to also in, include more the Micro 800 uh you know to, to build out systems so the micrologics uh there is a micro micrologics migration wizard so if you do have a micrologics controller and you want to move it over to a micro 800 you can use the wizard and it'll basically suggest what's the right uh, model to go to 
but there's also the uh, in advanced communications details are now available that you can build a an Ethernet system with these micro 800, the micro 850E or the 870E. So you can basically go into IAB, you can do uh, ad, in advanced communications, build out your network, uh, put the same thing Roger kind of had going there, except for I added a, 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 a touchscreen device 002 as the panel view 800, but essentially a micro 870, the point IO drop and the PowerFlex 525 drop. And what's kind of good here is that we can actually look at the um, kind of the stats uh, on what the communication would look like. So we've got a lot of green here, so that's good, You're right? So in, in this communications details, you know, it would tell us if we could have basically green, yellow, red, telling us, you know, are we, you know, are we overutilized? Are we, you know, reaching our maximum connections and stuff? So uh, so we can use IAB to help validate our designs before we go out and, and actually build them. Um, the other thing is a sample code library. So uh, again, sometimes a little bit of a secret out there, but if you go to Rockwell's sample code library, you can just Google Rockwell sample code library. If you uh, can't find it on their website, there is um, a rather large library of, of pre-built sample code for the micro 200 family. So all, all you have to do here is uh, go to the uh, sample code library page, type in micro 800 and hit search. And then there's um there's a lot of, uh, there's about 17 pages worth of, of sample code. So all kinds of various things. There's a, you know, there's an MQTT capability. Um, there's, uh, you know, things around motion controls, things around some simulations and stuff. So lots of different things to search in that library that might help you in your development. Um, so here's the link to uh, more additional resources. There's the, um, of course, the web pages themselves. There is uh, a lot of YouTube videos that Rockwell has posted out there on the Micro 800 family. Here's the link to the sample code library. So I know we make these slides available on our website after. So all these um, all these red links are are hyperlinked straight to Rockwell. Um, now there is one more thing I want to show at least on um, on my end, and that was. Uh, so, so actually, here's a sample code library uh, web page, and I just came had it open in case, but I could type in micro eight hundred here and get to that full library. But also in the uh, in the kind of the free download section, um, here is the user defined function block library. So there is a the library um, of these function blocks that you can go pull, and when you download this library, there's actually a um, a panel view eight hundred. A sample screen that comes along as well. So when you download this library, it'll actually look like a, um, uh, it'll come, uh, well, that's the wrong folder. It'll, it'll come as a, as a uh, archive CCW file. So to, to open that up, I can simply have CCW. I could say import a project. Right now it's, uh, it's in the RA folder, which is where downloads go. And then we talked about velocity a moment ago. So here's our velocity user defined function block with a panel view 800 sample screen. So if I just uh, take that, it's a CCW uh, ARC file for archive. So I say open. It says, oh, project's already got that name. It just says, uh, do you trust the source? I say yes. And it will open this up. I didn't pre-bake this one like the meatloaf that uh, Roger had there. Um, so basically we had a few different things getting imported here, which is why we had all these various, you know, do you trust um, flags come up. So in this one project, so that's another kind of key, key thing to note here is that in this one project, you know, I have my micro 70 controller. I have my PowerFlex uh, configuration of the PowerFlex drive itself. Um, and then I also have the panel view uh, application all as separate um, de uh, devices in this one project. So uh, if I go to my, uh, my, my panel view 800, I go to screens and here is my uh, PowerFlex uh, 520 um, 
status and command screen. So it is a pre-built screen that uh, that Rockwell has kind of uh, you know given us as a sample as a sample screen. So you can kind of take this, then you can take your um, your well, actually, this was the uh, this was the structure text that Roger mentioned. So, kind of, uh, so let me go to the uh, ladder diagram first here. So, Roger didn't show the, uh, the the logic, but this was the user defined function block that we could drop into our um, in our ladder. And basically, um, as Roger mentioned, there is the structure text that kind of runs in the background. So that user defined function block will just be using this structure text to basically move a lot of the uh, data points into the proper um, tags uh, for us, and not having to do all that work manually. So, hey, Wayne, yep. Quick, quickly, show that screen again. That that one, that five two five. Yeah. yeah the, there you go. You see where it says start, stop, jog. That's those tags. They're they're associated now with that, so you don't have to do the association with this UDFB. Uh, um, they're already so if you click that start stop jog that's what it's going to do just i just want to point that out yep. it's already configured for you yep thanks yep so um so basically you know we can there's a lot of resources out there to help you get started you don't have to go create from scratch um so i just wanted to kind of share show that uh, this is where we'll we'll always say please reach out to your local specialists or account managers from the at the Reynolds company uh, we're here to help you and 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 point you in the right direction sometimes these things aren't intuitive to find but uh we're more than happy to help uh help you find it by just bringing awareness to it so i think that's all i had as far as show and tell and resources i don't know if rogers has anything else you want to um make mention of before we nope my brain my brain is actually empty right now as All right. Well, we did that. Okay. Yeah, uh, that was, so we're, uh, we did good. Um, so we'll, we'll take a minute now and see if there's any questions you feel free to put in the chat. Um, I think we can even, uh, if you want to ask a live question, we can unmute your line if you're a participant out there, but, uh, we'll give you a minute to, to, uh, to chat in there if you want. Let's see. We got one question. Oh, PDHs and CUs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we we do make them available. Um, just reach out. Uh, uh, well, we got it captured here, Josh. We'll try to get it to you. But uh, we yeah. But if if you need to, just reach out to us, and and we can send the PDH. All right. Well, um, I guess we'll uh, without any additional questions at the moment, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, close out our session.